Wonderful to see so many of you here this, um, this morning. Um, I need 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12. Yes, I can count. 12 volunteers. 12 volunteers. So 12 people coming up. Yeah, just come up. Come up. That's fine. 1, 2, 3, 4. I need more than that. 5, 6. Adults included. 7. 1, 2, 3, 4. Seven. I need some adults then. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. Wonderful. Thank you. Eight. Okay. I'm a few off twelve. We're going to need some adult help here as well. Wonderful. Get Matthew. Get Matthew. Okay. You get Matthew as well. You could get Matthew as well. Okay. Wonderful. Whilst that's happening, um, Tansy, if you could pop that on for me, that would be wonderful. Jen, if you could hold that, because you may not end up hitting people, which is wonderful. <coughs> if I can give you these to hold, that's wonderful. Yeah, just like hand them out. That's wonderful. If you can understand that, then <clears throat> yeah, let's give you a wig. <clears throat> Do you talk amongst yourselves at the moment. We're just dressing people up here. <clears throat> wonderful. If you wanna pop that on as well, that's about your size. That's wonderful. <laughs> there you go. Another hand in the find find the arm. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's give you those. I think. I think you could, you could own those. Wonderful. There you go. And hold that. You're pretty much rocking that one already. <coughs> um, yeah, forget that one. <coughs> okay, if you want to pop that on. There uh, should be one more. <coughs> okay, we've got two more. You may just have to be there. <coughs> you, may, you may have to put it on as well. Suzanne, we're going to need you as well. Yeah. <coughs> Suzanne could be one of the directors. Okay, you got that? Don't drop it because it will hurt your foot. And you got that as well. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, so if you want to turn round. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Stand there. Wonderful. Yeah, if you want to kind of walk in there. And I don't know why you're, you're out of my position here. <coughs> you, you need to stand between the actor. <coughs> we need a bigger stage. Okay, so. Hi, I'm over here. Okay, so. Now this is where you can guess who we have. So over here, who do you think we have? Shout out. This is all participation. Baker, well done, thank you very much. Who do we have here? Plummer, it's amazing what you find lying around the church. Well done. Here? Electrician, well done. Here? Scientist. Here? Teacher, well done, good. Now, who, can anyone guess this one? It's a geologist, yes. I couldn't actually find a rock, but there's a rock, hammer, high vis. Google it, it's wonderful. Um, <coughs> Here, florist, horticulturalist, wonderful. Uh, who have we got here? It's not quite, he is quite hard actually. There you go. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Wonderful, Look, just like that. <coughs> Philosopher, so you think Greek, yeah. Creative imagination. Down here we did have, he seems to be rejecting it somewhat slightly, um, but it's royalty. Uh, back here. Actor, wonderful, here. Engineer. It's kind of, he's meant to be a farmer, so with the overalls. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a hat, I couldn't find a hat. Uh, and then here. Um, Undertake, yeah, funeral director. Okay, wonderful, okay. <laughs> You have to think creatively around here, you see? Very creative. Okay, so, you're probably wondering what any of these people have to do and why they're standing up here. But you see, the reason for all of these people being here is that's because Jesus identifies through this, through them, okay? Now stay with me here. So, because what Jesus says, and these are his sayings, that he says that he is the bread of life, so that bakers can understand him. He says that he is the water of life, so that plumbers can understand him. He says he is the light of the world so that electricians can understand him. He says he is the life and great physician so that scientists, doctors and nurses can understand him. He says he is the good teacher so that educators can understand him. He says he is the true vine so that horticulturalists can understand him. He says he is a solid rock so that geologists can understand him. He is wisdom so that philosophers 
can understand him. He is the word so that actors can understand him. He is the good shepherd so that farmers can understand him. He is the king of kings so that royalty can understand him. And he is the resurrection so that funeral directors can understand him. <laughs> See, so Jesus is the way. He made himself accessible to anyone who seeks him. And you may not see yourselves up here. You go, Anthony, I'm none of these. Um, but if you work in an office, so you're HR, you have to organise people. Guess what? Jesus organised people as well. He organised 5,000 people to come and eat with him. And he took messages for people and he got back to them as well, which was wonderful. And so catering, as I said, he fed 5,000 people. And also as well, there's a lovely story of him on the shore. He's cooking up some fish and he's saying to his disciples, come and eat with me. If you serve, if you're in the hospitality sector, guess what? Jesus was very hospitable. That's the right word, isn't it? Wonderful. <coughs> he was there. He was serving. He is the humble king. He is the servant who came to serve and to not be served. So whatever profession you're in, whatever it is, and if you say, well, I'm retired, guess what? You go out, you talk to people, you do fellowship, right? Jesus did fellowship as well. So whatever profession you're in, Jesus is already there. There is nothing that we can do where Jesus hasn't already been or gone before us. So wonderful. If you'd like to take all your stuff off and give, sit down, that's wonderful. Give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Oh, it's like the scientist got vaporised. Okay. So in our reading of 1 Timothy, just go sit down with it, Matt. Go sit down with it. I'm really... So in our reading of 1 Timothy, we're told that God is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords who alone is immortal and who lives in an unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. Now this seems like a God who is out of reach, out of sight, um, and not in anything that we can do. Jesus, however, is the, is the visible image of the invisible God. He is fully God as well as fully human. So therefore we can see through our second scripture, uh, where he tells us, and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. He is the way. He is our signpost, our direction, our unfaltering satnav. He points the way to God through himself. He is the truth. He is the voice of truth that says, do not be afraid. He is the voice of truth that stands the test of time and will continue to stand the test of time. And he is the reality of God's promises. And he is the life. He, jo he joins his divine life with ours through his death and resurrection so that we are united with him. He is, and therefore we can have life with him now as well as in eternity. So how do we have eternal life? Through God. But from our reading, uh, God is unreachable because we're so blemished, we can't be in his presence. However, we can reach him through Jesus, through the King of Kings. And only Jesus can bring us back to our true Father. And the thing is with Jesus is that he is the ultimate gentleman. He doesn't force himself on us. He doesn't say, come here, you're now mine. He is the ultimate gentleman. He comes to the door and he knocks. He doesn't do the dad knock, which is two knocks and in, in I come. Yes, we've all been there, we all know that one. Why knock? Just come in. <clears throat> but he does, that's what he does. He stands at the door and he knocks. Because he knows you. He's already chosen you. He knows you by name. And he knocks at your door and he says, will you let me in? He calls you by name and he says, Matt, I already know you. Are you going to open the door? Are you going to let me in? Tansy, I already know you. Are you going to open the door? Are you going to let me in? Because he doesn't impose himself on us at all. He is the ultimate gentleman. And for some of you, um, you may say, yes, I've already chosen Jesus. Um, and for some of you, you might be umming and narrowing about it. You're standing close to the door like I don't know whether to open it or not. But just imagine for a second that you're driving a car, that your car of life, okay? You may have heard this one before. And for some of us who said, yes, I follow Jesus, yes, I've got Jesus, the question is, where is he? Is he in the boot of your car? Do you get him out just for the one hour that you're here at church? You're like, look, here's me and Jesus, here's me and Jesus. One, yeah, see you next week. Get back in the car, Jesus. Slam down. Or do you use him like a spare tire? You know, it's like, oh, I need something. I need, I need help. 
I know, I've got Jesus. Right, help me fix it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much. Back in there you go. Stay in there till I need you again. Is that what we do? Or is he on the back seat of the car? Where he's just looking, he's observing. He's not one of these backseat drivers, luckily. So he just sits there and he's looking. He's like, oh, maybe not. Maybe he should have gone down a different route. But he keeps that all to himself because he's a lovely gentleman. Or is he driving, or is he in the passenger seat next to you? And therefore he's your companion. You know, as you're driving along, he's like, oh, yes, I think we should turn right. You're like, Jesus, I'm the one who's driving. I know better. Come on. As if I need directions, I'm going to go left here. Just put on your favourite track, Jesus, and that's fine. Or, is he driving the car? Now, if he's driving your car, and you're going, yeah, he's, he's driving my life. Question to you, are you a backseat driver? Are you, is he driving your car, but you're sitting on the back seat of the car, and he's driving along, and he's gone right, and you're going, where are you going, Jesus? Where are you going? We need to go straight on. He's like, well, I'm going down this route of forgiveness. And you go, well, I don't want to be forgiving of them. I'm not ready to forgive them yet. Or does he hang a left? And you're like, where are you going? We need to carry on going down this road. Yeah, but I'm going to go down this road of generosity. I don't have time to be generous. I've got somewhere I need to be, Jesus. This is a very inconvenient road you're taking me on. <clears throat> and so the thing is, if, if that is us, and guess what? We can be there from time to time, um, that we need to reposition him. If he's in the boot of our car, or if he's on the back seat of the car, we have to take him out of there and put him in the driver's seat. But also as well, what have you got driving your car? Because sometimes what we put on the front seat of a car isn't always Jesus, and sometimes it's not even us. Sometimes it can be work, it can be sports, it can be the opinions of others, um, it can be money, it can be a multitude of different things that's actually driving the car, which we need to take off and we need to put Jesus in its place. And when we put Jesus there, we need to wholeheartedly go, Jesus, I want you to be the one who drives my car. I want you to be the one who's directing me. Because the route that I'm going, that's not the route that's good for me. That's not the route that I want to be going. Because actually I'm driving further away from you and I want to be driving nearer to you. And the thing is, it's not always easy to let Jesus drive your car. Because he goes, well, if I'm driving, we're going to do it my way. Because inevitably, doing it Jesus' way is far better than doing it my own way. And sometimes when we say, yeah, I want to follow you, Jesus, but it's really hard. And actually, I thought following you was meant to be easy. Guess what? It's not. Uh, sorry if that comes as a shocker and surprise to you. Following Jesus is not easy. Um, but it is definitely worth it. Because when we go through those times, those bumpy bits in the road, which is really difficult, we've got Jesus that we can hold on to, which makes it a bit more bearable. And also, we're in a huge family. We're in a worldwide family. So no matter where we are, we can rock up to a church because there's our church family. And we can say, look, I'm going through this time and I need some prayer and I need some help. And we've got those people around us. And so Jesus is the only way. He has not hidden himself from us. And he surrounds us in everything that we do. And as I showed earlier, it's in the work that we do, it's in everything that we do, because he has already gone before us. So he's making it obvious. He's like, yo, I'm in your workplace. Oh, I'm in your activities. I'm in these groups that you're in. He is in everything that we do. And he's also then made it possible so that anyone who is anyone can relate to him and be able to seek him. And so Jesus is the King of Kings. He has made a way for all of us to see God and spend eternity with him. And all it takes is for us to say, yes, I will follow you, as we sang a moment ago. And I will put you in the driver's seat of my life. And as I said, he is a gentleman, so ask him. Say, Jesus, I want you to be in the driver's seat of my life. Help me make it possible. And he will. Won't necessarily be easy because we like to control things as, as humans, we like to be in control. But we have to go, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to follow you because of what I sing, because of what I read about you. That is true. You are the truth. You stood the test of time. If you said you'll make it possible for me, I will believe that you will do that. And as we move sort of into our next worship song... Uh, which is from heaven you came the servant king as we sing the lyrics allow them to soak in and just see how much the king of kings wants to be in a relationship with you 
He's chosen you. He's called you by name. He knows who you are. And no matter where you are, whether you are in employment, whether you're retired, whatever it is, know that Jesus is there with you. And so as we stand together, allow the song, sing along with it, but allow God into your life. Either sing along with it, but just listen to the lyrics, because he's a servant king who came to serve, and he wants to be with you. He wants to give you the best life possible. And all it does is it means that we take it off, and we come and we put it at the cross, at the King of Kings, because he is the one who can take us there. Amen.